So to continue with where we left off in chapter five, Dede spent a few warm fall days making repairs on his canoe, and then it was time for him to leave again. He would make one more big trip before the cold rains and then the harsh snow slashed down. Once he stopped gathering and selling the furs of other Anishinaabeg, he would go out on his own trap line. For the rest of the late fall and winter, he would be home and gone, home and gone. And each time he returned, Amakias thought with a sinking stomach, he would be hauling back skins for her to work on. So we know that Day Day's gone a lot of the times. Um, he is a trader. Um, and while Amakias is happy that he's back, she knows that he's bringing more work for her to do with this chore that she hates. One afternoon, his friends and partners came to visit and make their plans. Albert Lepatre and Fishtail came walking through the woods. When Angeline and Amakias saw the men coming, they decided to hide and quickly dived into a heavy stand of bush. Peeking between weedy stalks, they had a good view. Albert was round as a kettle and his big teeth stuck out pleasantly when he grinned. So I like the way they described Albert here, round as a kettle. Um, is he literally the shape of a kettle? No, but if we can picture a kettle in our mind, we know that they're fat and round. And so they're using that description to describe him, fat and round. He fancied himself quite a medicine man and wore at his throat a circle of bear claws. Next to him walked the tall and handsome fishtail. He had strikingly long, thick, oiled black hair and a hawk-thin face with a proud curl to his lips. He carried his pipe in the cradle of his left arm, close to his heart. So we've also just met two new characters, Albert and Fishtail. It was a fancy pipe made of a piece of sumac wood marked with a sweet grain. Bands along the stem were carefully beaded in black and yellow. Fishtail took extremely good care of his pipe, cleaned it often, prayed with it every sunrise. To him, it was a living thing. And again, in examining the importance of fishtail pipe, fishtail's pipe, it says he takes extremely good care of it. Um, it sounds like a very, very good pipe. And he said, it says to him, it was a living thing. Now, the pipe is not actually living, but the way that you take care of a living thing, a child or a pet, um, they're making that comparison that he takes care of his pipe the same way that people would take care of a living thing, a child, a pet, a person. The bowl was red pipe stone in the shape of an otter's head, his clan. Dark blue pony beads hung down a swatch of fringe and fishtail touched them carefully and lovingly as he stepped quietly along. Mikwam came out along the path to meet his friends and the men talked and joked before they made themselves comfortable, sitting on blankets on the ground. So these men are the friends and the partners of Day Day. Omakias saw her father open up his leather pouch of sweet kinnik kinnik and asima or tobacco. Fishtail lit the pipe and the fragrance of burning red willow tobacco hung peacefully in the air. And it describes the fragrance as hanging peacefully in the air so to me, that would mean that this is a calming scent. Each man, as he drew in the smoke, wore a look of concentrated and peaceful attention. The pipe passed around the circle twice before any of the men said a word. What they said made Omakias and Angeline creep closer and listen more carefully. Hidden in the grass and underbrush, they breathed quietly and opened their ears to catch the lower tones of the men's voices. And so the girls are hiding, um, they're eavesdropping, they're wanting to know what these men are talking about. And it says they opened their ears um, so that they could hear. We don't actually open our ears. It's just an expression used to, to say that we're listening carefully. Um, teachers might've even said that to y'all before too, open your ears, uh, make sure that you're listening. Chamukamen, said Fishtail in a growling tone of indignation. The word meant big knife, and it was used to describe the non-Indian 
or the white people who were traveling in larger numbers than ever to Ojibwa land and setting down their cabins, forts, barns, gardens, pastures, fences, fur trading posts, churches, and mission schools. So here we see they're talking about how the white men are coming and coming and coming and they're just like taking over with their schools and their land and their pastures and just kind of doing whatever they want. The point was becoming more Chamukaman every day. And there was talk of sending the Anishinaabeg to the West. So their island where they are is becoming more Chamukaman every day. That means more and more of these white people are coming. And these white people are talking of sending the Anishinaabeg, the natives, off their own land, sending them to the West. They say we must leave the island, Fishtail went on. No one commented. Curled against itching nettle leaves, Amakias eased her hand to her leg to scratch. She scratched silently and kept listening. That's right, her father said at last, contempt in his voice. That's what they are saying, the useless ones. So they really, there's no love lost here for the white men, um, the useless ones. They're, these white men are useless. Albert Lepatre drew on the pipe and frowned tamping and adjusting the tobacco burning in the bowl. He drew deep and puffed hard. He was part French, like Dede, but browner than Fishtail. His eyes were greenish brown. His round, cheerful face beamed. He sighed and with a faraway look said that he had a vision. Fishtail and Dede looked blankly and patiently at him when he said this, for Le Pache was known for recounting visions and dreams that had very little meaning, though they seemed to affect him hugely. Now he looked down sternly, gathering his thoughts. Suddenly he blurted out, I dreamed I had lice. So this man seems to think that he has these great, big, important visions, but um, Fishtail and Day-Day are just kind of like, oh Lord, here we go again. In the brush, Angeline and Amakias clapped hands over their mouths to stifle their glee. Dede and Fishtail managed to keep straight faces, but Amakias was sure she saw the corner of Dede's mouth twitch. Albert Lepatre sighed. The meaning is unclear, he muttered. Let us find the meaning, said Dede. His voice was serious, but the girls both knew that he was having fun with Lepatre. Was anything else happening in your dream? Lepache frowned as though overcome with the weight of his vision. Yes, he said, we were planning a dance gathering. Ah, said father, the meaning now becomes clear. This was a deep dream indeed. What? Lepache was breathless. From now on when you dance, father said, without allowing the trace of a smile, you will dance hard enough to shed your lice. Yes, Lepatre's voice was suspicious, but neither Dede nor Fishtail lit on by any sign that father's interpretation was a joke. So they're kind of having fun with Lepatre here, kind of poking fun at him. Perhaps, said Lepatre, I should tell you my own thoughts. And then, to Angeline and Amakias' surprise and dismay, he told the other men that he was thinking of taking his family, all ten of his children, his uncles and grandmas and grandpas to a Western post where he had heard government payments were made. So they're actually considering leaving. Omakias nudged Angeline. Those children were their friends to think that they might have to leave. Omakias nearly cried out, but Angeline poked her to be quiet. So the girls don't want their friends to leave. They know that the white men are coming and that there's talk that they might have to leave, but this is kind of making it real. All of the Ojibwe would be safe on their own land further west, Albert was saying. No one would bother them. Yes, there were hazards on the way, Dakota war parties, hunger, the threat of winter's dire weather. He'd rather not go. Still, said Jolly Albert, he had moved before when the waves of white people lapped his feet. So this is not the first time he's moved. Um, it says he moved before when the waves of white people lapped his feet. So it's just white people coming and coming in giant groups and waves and, you know, kind of getting too close to him and his land. West, always west, said Dede, agreeing slowly. We hear the Chamukam and axe ring in the woods, chopping a tree. We should be gone before the tree falls. 
We have to stop somewhere, someday. Fishtail drew thoughtfully on the pipe and the fragrant smoke clouded his face. West is where the spirits of the dead walk. If the whites keep chasing us west, we'll end up in the land of the spirits. So here they're saying they are keep being pushed west. Um, They hear the white men's axe in the woods, chopping down trees, probably to build their houses or their settlements. And they're saying, we really need to be gone before they actually get here. Um, But saying, keep going west further and further. Now we're going to be where the dead walk. Um, If we go too far, we're going to be with the dead. We're going to be dead. um, And we're going to end up in the land of the spirits. I have dreamed that's where they want us to go anyway, said Albert. That will please them. They are like greedy children. Nothing will ever please them for long, said Dede. Although his grandfather had been French, he was raised and considered himself Ojibwa and kept the rules of his mother's dotum or clan, the catfish clan, the Alwasi. Only in some Chamukaman things, his cabin, for instance, and his ability to play and win the white man's game of chess with the traitor, did he take secret pride. So Dede's half French, um, but he was raised as a Jibla and kept those traditions. Not until they have it all, said Fishtail, all of our lands, our wild rice beds, hunting grounds, fishing streams, gardens, not even when we are gone and they have the bones of our loved ones, will they be pleased? I have thought about this. So the white men just want everything. Fishtail put up his hand and held it there, looked keenly at his friends. Before they were born, before they came into this world, the Chimukaman must have starved as ghosts. They are infinitely hungry. The men smoked with increased intensity, looking deep into the fire as the breeze came up and dusk lowered. Dede was thoughtful, his eyes deep and clouded. Even the Patre looked serious. The dimples set hard in his cheeks so that now the men are kind of contemplative. They're down, they're in their own thoughts, thinking about what's going on, what could happen. Watching in the bushes, Omakias and Angeline waited for them to resume their talking. But that day, mulling over Fishtail's difficult words, perhaps, the men kept their silence.